I am here at the Fillmore, and today we are going to be asking fans why they love their favorite teams. Well, I really love 100 Thieves, and the reason is really I love Aphromove. I'm going to go with 100 Thieves because Aphromove. The team is awesome as a unit, and they're really doing a great performance, and I'm enjoying it. 100 Thieves because I really like what Aphromove has done with the team. My favorite team is 100 Thieves because of Aphromove. I think he's a really good shot caller as being a support and carrying his team. I, I love him. He's an amazing player. TSM because they're one of the first teams I ever watched, and I love him. And Hanser, he's too good. TSM, I've been playing since season one, and I've always loved the culture. Bay life. I love Reggie. I wish he was still playing, but Bjergsen's great too. Favorite team would probably be C9. Um, they have great players, amazing org. My C9 jersey's at home. TL because double lift. Favorite team is Team Liquid. Um, I've always loved the awesome comeback story. So for them being the, having the curse in the fourth place and then having them be in the finals, it's just awesome to see. They have Paul Belter. They have Impact. So much talent on that team. I'm so hyped to see it. So they're going to take it for sure. 3-0. Hello and welcome back for game two where Team Liquid have selected blue side. 3-0. That's on track. That's he quite was, a statement His predictions to make. working so far. Yeah, my favorite team is the casting team. I love you guys. So. <laughs> oh, look at that. We got the whole this here in game number two. Kumbaya. But... In the last game, though, uh, I mean, he talked about the talent on uh, Team Liquid as well. You have to say, uh, especially the veteran players, you know, Smithy with the Baron Steel, that's something that is going to jump out in your mind and what you'll remember from that game. Exactly. And it, I go way back for Smithy. It's been a few years since he had actually won an NALCS championship. He's been in the finals multiple times, but the last time he won, he went to MSI, and then his objective secures will really put him on that international map where he was stealing Elder Dragon, stealing Barons with creative ways. Yeah, the Kindred Ultimate will definitely be one I remember. Let's get into game number two here, though, for Team Liquid and 100 Thieves. The sides are swapped around. The Thieves on the red this time. Team Liquid in the blue. We'll see how that changes things here in the draft. We will see the Gangplank banned away again. Swain also banned out. Team Liquid, they got to play the Caitlyn last time around. They just want to get rid of it this time. Yeah, they don't want to let Cody Sun have that one. They also saw the hard carry performances that he was able to pull it off with. And Team Liquid are not in the same boat as Hunter Thieves where they were willing to take the Tristana and try and scale up the range and wait to later, uh, but they weren't given that time. Yeah, and this is such an interesting pick ban already for Team Liquid because the banning of the Caitlyn and the Zaya, you typically want to first pick those. This kind of so shows to me either they're trying to really pinch down Cody Sun's champion pool for those hard carries, or they're looking to not first pick an AD carry and leave it for later. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Swain ban did go through. A jungle priority still here. Trundle Ooh, now yeah, going to be the one that is left up. Team Liquid did successfully utilize that to shred tanks and kind of change the way the overall team comps look. And they will be locking it in here in game number two. 100 Thieves also made sure they keep the Kench on the bench. Both games so far this series, they want to shut down some of that safety. And in all four games that Team Liquid played against Echo Fox, they got Trundle, all four of them. And they even showed they were willing to first pick Trundle blue side when Caitlyn was up. It was a higher priority for them than that absolute dominant bottom lane AD carry. And we haven't seen it yet, but the Trundle still is, keep in mind, a flex pick that could possibly go top, doesn't have to be in the jungle. And 100 Thieves pick up their support first and foremost. Zyrene, you said at the beginning of last game, this is Aphromoo's most played support by a mile, 10 games on it already compared to Alistair was next at three. It was denied from them in game number one, and they're not allowing that to happen again. Plus, Orn is still available, and that rises the priority. If you have the Braum on your side, he can't be used to counter those big team fight ultimates, uh, and they really are devastating. Some teams will still pick multiple tanks into Trundle uh, and not go the route of, oh, you know, they have a tank shredder, so we can't pick any tanks. Uh, you know, you just have to take the hit. Yeah, I'm always worried about that because some people are a little averse to it, but I'm interested to see what Someday does here. They have last pick. He has pulled out some pocket picks like the Darius and the Poppy before, so I really want to see if they're leaving that for the last pick here, and that's what I would assume since they've already picked up their support here, too. 
to. Well, after those high priority picks on the Trundle and the Braum, we're seeing a couple repeats from game number one. Meteos will again be piloting the Skarner, and you're gonna see Pobelter on that Azir for the second time here as Team Liquid decides they may have banned out a couple of the hyper carries, but that Tristana is still gonna fit their bill. Again, they've been very open about how they wanna play this game. They like the late game power of Azir and X AD carry champion, since they themselves have taken off the Caitlyn uh, due to her range advantage and the CS that we just saw double get last time in the matchup. They're going for the Tristana as well, this time in their hands. And this leaves things like Ash, Ferris, Kogma for Cody Sun could be a possibility. But they're going to pick their mid laner here, make sure it doesn't get pinched more. But that means the AD carry position will drop down quite a bit. And this fits exactly the style you think of for 100 Thieves and for Ryu. We talk about how he likes the Galio, he likes the Rise, he likes Talia, he likes the Roamers that influence bottom lane. There you go. Yeah, and it seems like he's just looking for a, a change of pace because last game, Rise and Talia were both up, and he picked Rise with Cassiopeia banned. This game, they know what they're playing into, and he picks the Talia even though Rise is up. So it just looks like he's looking for more roaming power because Talia does bring that in spades. And when you get an advantage, the Siege with the Wall will usually guarantee you a turret. Yeah, it definitely can be huge as far as the objective play. And we'll see if 100 Thieves can utilize that one effectively. Now a lot of focus being torn towards the bottom side because AD carry has not been picked for 100 Thieves and support has not been picked for Team Liquid. So these are the focus of the bands in round two. Right, we have asynchronous drafts as opposed to last time where you saw the same three roles picked by both teams in the first half. So the support bands coming out for the Thieves. Liquid gonna focus a bit more on the AD carry role for now. Alistair and Tarek banned away, so two of those big melee pickups. The Thieves don't want to see Liquid pick yeah, up. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, Tristana can go, you know, for all in plays with a, with an Alistar or with a Tarek. You can you move the stuns around, but Tristana can also be paired with a ranged support uh, to try and get through the early stages where she's trying to build up a range. And I always think about Morgana for Olay, even when it's not in flavor of the month, he's the one picking it up all the way back when he was on Hong Kong Esports. I remember watching him in the LMS, just being like, okay, he's playing Morgana, nobody else is. It's definitely a throwback for him. And I expect that here, because Black Shielding on Azir or a Tristana late game just adds even more to the hard to kind of stick to champion. All right, you're talking about hard to stick to champions. Ezreal is pretty slippery when you're thinking about AD carries. The arcane shift gives him the ability to get himself out of most problematic spots, and the range of the Mystic Shot means he'll be able to rein in that poke from a long way away. We'll see if that's the recipe for success here for 100 Thieves. Their last pick, like you guys predicted, is going to be that top lane for someday, giving him plenty of time to see the entire composition from Liquid before picking up what'll be that last piece of the puzzle. And someday is another guy uh, that we should probably talk about from last game. Really good uh, engagements and team fight play there on the Horn, getting two double lift, getting some very key kills for them. So definitely a, a good move here from 100 Thieves, keeping his pick. And there's probably gonna be your Morgana lock-in as well for Ole. Now, another thing with the Ezreal pick there for 100 Thieves for Cody Sun is it, it has a possibility of letting Aphromoo roam around and create plays on this Braum a little bit earlier. Yeah, very self-sufficient. And right here, last champion to be picked. The Orn, pretty standard here, I guess, with the Cho'Gath band away. You've got the Orn, and you don't have to worry about the enemy team with the Braum. Now they've got the Braum. There's no way for that to be shut down so easily with the ultimate and the team fights. It means someday can use that a bit more freely to try to set things up from a long way away. But again, he does have to be worried about that Trundle shredding those stats. Yeah. And while they do have one Dark Shield, Ole's going to have to choose between Pobelter or Double Lift to try and give that crowd control immunity to when they see the Skarner and the Orn coming. Right now, look at these team comps. Team Liquid, front to back fighting is gonna favor them because they have a team oh, yeah. shredder, they have ways to engage and pick champions, and a lot of damage from these two hyper carries. But then on the side of 100 Thieves, this feels like a more get an early advantage with the Talia, roam to the side lane, try to pressure these lanes, because later on it feels like it's not going to be as straightforward as a, of a fight for them. Right, the front to back for these guys, you just don't have the same level of sustained long range damage that you get from the Azir and the Tristana once they're on six items, but you've got pick power and you've got rotations. I have to say, it might be a while till you get to that point though, because it the could. big AOE that is on 100 Thieves may have something to ha do with it in the earlier stages. 100 Thieves, Definitely put up a good fight against Liquid in game number one. We can't pretend like 
that was a liquid, just complete landslide, right? 100 Thieves, if it wasn't for that Baron play, that fatal smite fight that went the way of Xmithy, we could have seen a very different story told early on in that first game. But now they have to make sure they can mentally reset, be ready to go as we go into game number two. And that smite was so important because that was a one fight for 100 Thieves. They go towards the Baron. Aphromoo looks like he's going to actually knock Xmithy out of the pit, and then Impact stops it. The teamwork from TL comes up huge, and that's the difference because if that one smite goes off, they get the Baron instead, and then they end up being able to push and do what TL did to 100 Thieves. We have found ourselves in a pause, by the way, just as the match starts up. So we'll get back to you guys with an update on that, hopefully as soon as we can to let you know what's going on and how soon we can get back onto the Rift. It looks like we are seeing some players saying they're ready to go. So hopefully the issue has been fixed before it ever really got a chance to be that much of a bump in the road here for us, but just a little bit of extra time for these guys to think about maybe how they want to play the opener. Yeah, or you just kind of remember the last one because you were just talking to me about jungler perspective and from right. Medios' perspective, yes, that was an amazing steal from Smithy, but it definitely is kind of crushing whenever you, you are on the receiving end of one of those steals. Just need to reset and all of, both of these teams have plenty of veterans that, that have that poise of course. Uh, and that class there to be able to reset in a best of five series. And the thing that cracked me up is, you know, we're talking about these guys have so much poise. Afromu on your screen right now, when he got the MVP yesterday, he was like, I'm really nervous. And he's not nervous during interviews. It's like, that's him nervous? He looks completely composed. <laughs> so Afromu, he's used to high pressure situations. And that's why, you know, he was almost able to help them come out with the victory there on the Baron. But TL. Working a little bit better so far from what we've seen. Loading back into Summoner's Rift now. You can see us jumping into the screen, working our way into the Rift. It's time for game two. Can the Thieves strike back and tie this series up? Or will Liquid take us to match point early on? They would love to be able to do that. They would love to make it so it's only one more win before they hoist the trophy. But 100 Thieves is not the kind of team to easily let that happen. Nope, on the bottom side, they're already starting. Medios going after double lift here, but a quick rocket jump over the wall. They still force him to start W though, which means that he won't have push advantage bottom. Cody Sun and Aphromoo should be able to actually clear minions a little bit faster, but we see a counter on the top side. Also, Medios again has the Skarner and will be willing to start without a pull here. Impact taking a couple hits there. They're all moving right across the map. You almost have Medios and Cody Sun here. Yeah, Impact lost a large chunk of health here, and it's a minute and 10 seconds into the game. Probably won't be able to go back and refill at the fountain. Minions soon to come. And we talked about how we're keeping eyes on Meteos and kind of mentally resetting after the smite fight and things like that. But at the same time, considering Meteos is reprising his role in the same champion as last game, we critiqued Meteos' pull picks a little bit. So I want to see how exactly he prioritizes those targets here as 100 Thieves will look to force Liquid away from their red buff. Yeah, Ole does hit a binding here. They're stalling out the start on this red buff, and Smithy's sticking around. They are not go gonna give up this red. One of the most important things here is the mid laners. They are fighting for priority, so who can get here first? Who can potentially even get level two and then join this? So it's all about these skill shots and who gets priority. It looks like Ryu. Whoever can join first will have a massive impact on this, but Poe Belter's also coming down now. Remember, the Skarner Spire Elite. has been captured, so Medios is very, very weak in this level one fight. He did start with the Fracture, so the stun's available, but Skarner's just not that threatening early on like this. Binding gonna come out and going to miss. Ryu continuing to look to shove in here in the mid lane. Pobelter throwing some damage down onto him. Both junglers still having not cleared a single camp for themselves. <laughs> Xmithy will go right back to the Spire. Medio says, get the hell away from there. That's mine. Oh my goodness. We still have level one junglers and supports in this game. AD carries have gone to lane, by the way, and are CSing. Ryu drawn <laughs> over once again. Cody Stone actually has a level two advantage. Level two advantage, lands the Mystic Shot. Arcane Shift also finding its way onto double lift there as supports and junglers will still not give up the ghost here in the jungle as they're trying to fight for this red. It seems like Smithy has the advantage and all this time that was invested by the Thieves ends up not turning into much of anything. Medios now level one, three minutes into the game. Medios uh, is unable to get the steal there and Smithy once again Actually, just the patience there for the team. They're able to wait them out and hold strong. Yeah, they played it right as well. I was looking at the mid lane HP. Ryu did get chunked out a little bit more than Poe Belter. So they really do have to just call off that whole thing. Even though Double Lift got chunked by Cody Sun, it looked like they were just saying, all right, 
Nope, it's over. They, we can just go ahead and go back to jungling. Yeah, part of the ramifications of that extended jungle fight there is that Cody Sun has the uh, big CS lead over double lift here. They have him pushed into turret, and he's going to try and get off an early uh, recall here. I believe he should have enough for the tier, and that is a perfect timing for oh. an Ezreal. So he gets basically a free base on that shoved wave for a tier. Even though it didn't pay off in the jungle, they didn't get to grab the buff, getting <laughs> Cody ahead is big. I mean, that's been 100 Thieves' plan almost every game. Of co Focus Help on Cody Sun. Sun. Give him the first blood. Four tanks into Cody compositions. Those come out very frequently. And so setting him up is exactly what they want to be able to do. Because they put so much faith in this guy who has the least experience out of anybody on this roster by a mile. And they have so much confidence in him. They kind of push him up all the time, and Aphromoo wants to make him a star, and we see it happen almost every game that they get him ahead. Yeah, that's the big part. Cody Sun has delivered on that promise. He has fulfilled his end of the bargain thus far. This guy was standing right across from Double Lift last year in the finals. These are the same two AD carries going head to head once again. Same 280 carries from last finals going head to head. And remember, both these guys got player of the series in their respective semifinals here just this split. They're still performing at the top level. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, you see Double Lift peaking at the right time here. The KDA for himself, very high in playoffs. And it seems to get that playoff buff. Cody Sun, though, though, he still has that kind of sophomore experience. And you're looking for him to perform when it matters most. Well, Olay's performing here, landing quite a few bindings onto the Ezreal whenever we swing the camera down to this side. Smithy also swinging his way down here, though. Yeah, Olay throwing those bindings to his old lane mate. Yeah, throwing catch. Ooh, Smithy creeping on up into the brush. It's three versus two. Team Liquid wants to make the moves onto 100 Thieves. Cody Sun having a flash away to get out of the binding. Aphromoo throws up the shield. And 100 Thieves get out at the cost of both of Cody Sun's summoner spells. Yeah, two summoner spells for zero there. And that's going to give the push over to double lift. And we talked about how the tier was good for Ezreal. Doesn't really help you in these fights. Early helps you scale and get a little bit ahead of the curve. But right there, you see it doesn't matter too much. Oh. There's a TP. TP coming in mid lane. Looking that's to impact. collapse here onto Ryu. Impact wants to try to punish him for having <laughs> low mana and low HP. but doesn't quite have the ability to get in range without the ulti. And so that one was kind of just an opportunity, uh, and they jumped on this, right? Impact well is going to teleport back to lane. Teleporting here to mid, he doesn't lose that on too much. Maybe he'll lose one melee up there. His route, though, is kind of strange. And yeah, it did take him extra time, and actually, now he's cornered. He's cornered, but someday misses the initial knock up there. Meteo's coming in, able to find some lockdown. Here comes your Ornn ulti. Ooh. Impact knocked up into the air. The aim strikes true, but he's still able to stay alive. It's two versus two. Meteo's trying to get away now from Vic Smithy and the rampaging glory and death from Impact. Someday gets back underneath the turret, but it's a one for one trade. But Pole Belter's up here as well. I don't know if they're going to go for a dive. It looks like they're just going to back off, but that means that they don't have someday clearing this minion wave out and pushing it, and it'll freeze. And, you know, Ryu on Talia has hit level six, so now he gets to push the wave and he can look uh, somewhere else. Here we go, though. They try and punish Impact for teleporting mid instead of top and then just walking back up because they also have the level six on Orn. But Smithy arrives and he knows Impact's got two lives. Yeah, Impact also hit level six in the middle of that fight. Got a knock up in their face, so they got more damage on the Meteos. They got more time to dish out the damage before he drops, and that was what allowed them to kind of get the counter kill. And let's not overlook the fact that Someday also did a great job there of reading Impact's flash and knocking the second part of the ult towards him after he tried to outplay it with the flash behind. That was a great read from him to make sure they got the damage and that extra CC to facilitate that kill. I mean, if you didn't have that, that could have gone very wrong. Yeah, there's a flash advantage now, but the Talia is roaming. Here goes Ryu. Gonna walk over the Scuttle Crab, maybe, or he was taking the uh, Spire. Ah, uh, Ward sees him out, so gonna pull a stop to that roam. Bottom lane playing appropriately. Yeah, but right now, Cody Sun's at a large disadvantage. BF Sword to tier has been able to purchase anything. He's been trying to just stay in lane during this time. And so it's a large advantage now for Double Lift in terms of the items. That's why you can see he's just underneath his turret here. You might have to call your jungler over to potentially gank and get Double Lift and Olay to back off because they are fine at staying in this lane state until the turret drops. So you have to disrupt it as 100 Thieves. Meteo's trying to get himself to that level six point, which is such a big turning point for Skarner. He will have the ultimate available now. Predator not quite off cooldown. Flash either, so not all of those playmaking tools at the ready just yet. I wonder if Afro move is gonna swap for TP. He did swap, there it is. 
All right, that is going to relieve a little bit of the pressure. But again, Cody Sun still, he's got 14, over 1,400 gold still left in his pocket right now on the Ezreal. Uh, and the pressure is not relenting here from the Team Liquid bottom lane. Double left happy to stick around here with Ole. You can see he's up about 200 gold as well on that Ezreal, oh. despite the CS being even. Because of the fact that, you know, he Still got kleptomancy. Some kleptomancy. And during that early part, he did get a few of those Skarner Spires. Ryu and Poe Belter in the mid lane, staying pretty close overall. Ryu falling slightly behind in the CS, about a single wave, but he'll make up a bit of that, clearing out those last bit of caster minions here. And we've seen him try to make a couple of rotations down, whether it was at that level one fighter where he tried to rotate down to bottom lane just a minute ago, but it hasn't proved successful so far. And looking forward, you want to always be proactive in where is the enemy going to try and set up a play. Again, since Cody Sun doesn't have a lot of combat stats, you could look bottom. There's a Morgana binding. Those have been landing over and over for Ole, and it could very well draw some jungler attention. Meteos is kind of crossing the entire map right now, maybe thinking about heading back. Yeah, it's just a strange situation for the Skarner to be in because the enemy top laner doesn't have flash. Impact is flashless would be a pretty easy target to get onto and potentially grab, but you do want to focus that bottom lane that's suffering and alleviate that pressure by ganking it. Yeah, plus the two-on-two -two always feels bad versus a Scion if you focus him down and, and Smithy still arrives late like the last duel, then he gets right back up. Blue buff passed off to Ryu there to make sure he can continue pushing these waves down, doing exactly what Talia wants. And Smithy is invaded the Raptors and shows on them, so Meteos moves to the bottom side knowing that there's no possibility of the Trundle being here. Oh, that's a great one. mid lane. Ryu forced to flash out with a flash after by Poe Belter. Throws him right back into the waiting arms of his teammate. Ryu tries to escape from this one, but it's going to be a very difficult trip out. Still oh. getting that distance. Oh, the drift. He's escaped for Woo. now. He goes on a ride of oh. oh. by Ole. Ole got him with the ultimate snag right there. They're leashing the dragon as well. Might as well do that one. Oh, Never mind. oh my gosh. He actually is spamming the ultimate and yep. tags him with it. Yeah, snags him with it, knocks him right off. Dragon's going to be started up, and Team Liquid finally catch Ryu. I believe, maybe if we see the replay, we can show the fog of war, but I believe that 100 Thieves, with that control work you see behind their red buff, saw Smithy going to the Raptors, and so they were aware of his position, yet it was just such a good pillar from Smithy that they caught Ryu out. Yeah, that pillar was beautiful. Doesn't just close off the route. It forces you to go a completely different one. And then Ryu, his flash, not exactly a reactionary flash. It's a predictive flash here. Perfect. Yeah. They do see him over the ward there. Thank you, observers. They even captured the Spire, so they definitely knew he was there. Alerts have been sounded. And Ryu is playing to the bottom side here because he knows he's there. But the pillar separates him right there. The flash is easily answered by Pobelter. I like the no hesitation from Pobelter going into tower range. Even though he takes three tower shots to start this play out, they've got the extra man coming too with impact, the Scion. Oh. it on down, and that then Ole so clutch. snags him with the ultimate. Doesn't even try for, you know, the risky binding. Just hits it. Yeah. <laughs> the face you make when you almost got away. He's like, I got away from the Trundle. I got away from the Azir. I got away from the Sun. Oh, uh, Ole. <laughs> it was almost a great escape, but that kill does go over to Ole. He burns his flash for it, which gives an advantage to the bottom side of the map here for 100 Thieves temporarily. And it's kind of what do they do with these summoners that are down? Because TL so far, you saw pretty much it was everybody almost in attendance there to get Ryu. Sometimes even the sneakiest of thieves can't outrun the law. Ooh. As now it's a two versus two here in the mid lane. Meteos taking some damage uh, out to start. Flashes forward onto Poe Belter. Looking to grab oh! the stun. Meteos makes sure he gets the kill. It's one for one as both top laners show up and both walk away. Oh my goodness, they do get the kill. Minos commits his flash for that one though, as maybe they thought that they were gonna be the only ones with the teleport coming in. Anyways, kills traded over in the end and bottom side actually ultimate hitting. It did look like Meteos took too long to actually go for that ultimate there and hesitated for a moment. We'll have to see it again, but now everybody looking towards that bottom side again and Cody Sun trying to hit that priority. He finally got to buy. He finally got his Monomune going. And so now up against that Tristana, who's got those half items. So watch here, Medios, he gets pillared, and then he walks all the he way around. He dodges the ult. But he walks all the way around. Yeah, it looks like, to me, when I see situations like that, uh, you can kind of see the communication, the team's communication. They're like top laner saying, hey, I can teleport. And they're like, okay, now I'll go back in for it. Uh, but a little bit too late there. And then 
teleports were answered anyways, so we're left in a situation where it's just flashes on top side. Impact working without his turret, though. Yeah, by the way, turret went down. Banner of Command completed first for someday. And that's actually pretty big. That's the difference between who's got the slight gold lead right now. 100 Thieves up just 300 gold, and now Pobelter, the target once again. The second part of the ult just a little bit shy of being able to connect and P.O.B. walks away on that. So much mid lane focus this game. Actually, double stone for a long trade on a Cody Sun, but these continued plays around mid to try and punish uh, the mid laners without flash continue to draw more and more players. Yeah, and if you're able to get one of those mid laners down, you could potentially go for one of the side lanes right after, because especially with something like the Talia, it's very easy once you get a kill to go roam to that side lane and force a dive, which could potentially reward you with another turret if they back off. And I like the tier from him as well. The Talia, as we've seen, kind of looting Zeko back and forth. The tier allows him to have more mana, but hold on, four people in the bottom side for TL. Cody's son and Afro, but who can have a hard time getting away from this when Cody's already down. Afro will follow him shortly after. The stopwatch from Ole to make sure he doesn't die to the turret. Aggro and Liquid walk away with two. Oh, with all the ganks going on around mid lane, uh, you know, Double Lift and Ole quietly doing a lot of work, taking out chunks of health from the 100 Thieves bottom lane, and they're finally rewarded with a roam from their team, capitalizing in a couple of kills there. And as you said, more turret pressure. Tristana loves some alone time there, should be able to knock that down. More turret pressure. That's the first turret kill for Team Liquid. That's going to put them up to about a 1,000 gold lead. But it seems like the tempo and everything just keeps going their way. Even if the gold doesn't appear explicitly for Liquid, plays like this show that they're in the driver's seat. And it looks like Azir Pobelter roams down. Impact takes his spot for a second mid, and he's just able to clear that mid wave and allow them to not lose anything here as they go for this roam. Yeah, Team Liquid have been very mobile. Uh, their lane assignments pretty fluid here, swapping between top and mid and down to bottom, changing as needed. The words that we heard from Coach Kane via Avali before this whole thing started, confident that Team Liquid is the best team out there and they would be able to walk away with the victory here today. They're looking pretty darn good in what we're seeing so far. I mean, the preseason power rankings almost all had TL as number one, sometimes number two but everybody was expecting this team to be near the top of the standings. They had a little bit of a trip up in the middle of the season, but they seem right on track. They're already up 1-0, and they're up in this game. It's a team with so much star power, players that have all seen the final stage before, and they're showing why right here, off to a solid lead against 100 Thieves in game number two. But 100 Thieves is definitely not out of this one yet. Still about one and a half thousand gold behind. Liquid will pick themselves up the Rift Herald now. They were able to use that successfully in game number one. We'll see what they can make of it here in game number two as they take down the turret in the top side. And this is similar to, 100, uh, to Team Liquid in the mid game of last uh, game that we did see. They're remaining extremely proactive here. Constantly with another objective in mind. Double up takes down the top turret. Now they rotate to this dragon. They've got one second left on that spawn, and they're headed down the river. But there is some vision advantage here for 100 Thieves. They're going to try to pick somebody off. Medios, I don't believe Olay spotted him. That ward came out after. Olay has used the black shield now. Medios thinking about trying to look for something. Ryu's going to throw out the wall. That'll keep impact away. 100 Thieves still wanting to go for something there. Oh. Medios throws out the Fracture to stop Xmithy. Xmithy does have the Flash available, ready to go. 100 Thieves still looking to start things off. They're able to go on to Impact, but that is still the tank. Xmithy caught out, taken very low. Now Ryu looking to block his escape path off. Ryu has to get himself away. Xmithy's still going to be kept alive, and Liquid gets away clean. Xmithy saved his Flash so long there. Team Liquid, it looked like they were debating turning to fight that around, but as 100 Thieves landed that stun, they finally had to get him out. In the end, it does also cost Impact his Flash as he tries to get out, though. And there are just so many summoners blown. Six out of six Elemental Drakes this series so far for Team Liquid. They have had immaculate neutral objective control. A lot of that is off the back of the bottom lane having priority, and then Smithy kind of roaming around with Poe Belter. Actually, that wasn't a team call to try and save Smithy's flash. We just got a, a recognition here that that flash was on cooldown a couple of seconds. It was ticking up and just came off of cooldown. So the team actually saving Private Smithy there <laughs> gets him out of the Dragon Pit. The person that I kind of give the, the tip of the hat to 
in that saving private Smith the operation was Olay. He gave him the black shield that stopped the knockup from coming through, that even allowed him to use yeah. Flash at the last second. Well, Team Liquid has now found themselves in a spot where they're almost 3,000 gold ahead just 18 minutes into this game. They've taken down all three links in that chain of outer turrets, and they're owning this map. Just to add on to that, I believe the heal from Doublelift was also blown uh, over the wall, so everybody's <laughs> got their part. In the end, though, let's see what 100 Thieves can do about it. The outer turret kind of hanging by strings there for Team Liquid. 100 Thieves looking to rebound. Well, there are no neutral objectives to fight for right now. The Drake was just taken. Baron's going to be live here in just over one minute. And like I already mentioned, Liquid's got that ring of outer turrets down. And while that is extra gold in their pockets, it means you've got to push deeper into enemy territory to keep building those leads. And one thing they can help use or use to help them there is they have two Mountain Drakes and they have the Rift Herald on Smithy. So when they go for that next push, it could be a very fast one to knock down one of those inner turrets. Speaking of fast, Meteos turns Ryu. on the Predator. Ryu swoops in from the side and Xmithy, remember, has no flash to speak of. Taken very low. Knocked right back in as Poe Belter comes over the Ryu wall. And now it might be Liquid, who's found a hundred oh! feet real fast. But a four-man shuffle finds them all and Liquid finds huge success. Hundred Thieves take down Smithy, but Poe Belter finds vengeance for his friend. That four-man Shurima shuffle changes the whole fight at the end of it. And TL, they get four of them. That is the kind of big playmaking in the pit you want to see in game number one. Smithy steals the Baron in game number two. Poe Belter finds the ult and now on spawn. Team Liquid moves to Baron. The double Mountain Drakes with Azir and Tristana damage melts that thing down. And Meteos will be nowhere nearby to try any kind of a steal. 20 minutes and 10 seconds into game two. Liquid's got Baron again. Both games so far, it has been one mistake from 100 Thieves by the Baron pit. And here, they start this fight, they get Xmithy, and then they all back up because that TP location, they're all up against the wall though. Paul Belter, the slide, the flash, the four-man oh. shuffle. What a beautiful all-in from Pope Belter. Getting all of the kills there back for the team. And Baron plus Rift Herald, the super double purple siege in mid. A true emperor leads from the front and Pope Belter shows his guys exactly where to go. Now they're pushing down the mid lane. It's inhibitor turret number one under fire and it will burn straight down to the ground in just a moment. One more shot from that cannon minion will do it. And the base is broken. Team Liquid continuing this push. Afro move very low on that. Despite the fact that he's got the unbreakable, he's still got to be careful below half HP. Liquid on to that inhibitor now with the turret out of the way. They should take this very easily. 21 minutes in, that's already down. This is such a massive amount of momentum for Team Liquid as Someday will barely keep himself out of the way of the Dark Binding as Impact falls back, just trying to buy a little bit more time, allowing Team Liquid to push up. Tier 2 goes down. Push continues forward towards inhibitor turret number 2. They'll set Ryu up the wall. for that. Ryu throwing out that wall. Can't find a whole lot of anything. Impact's the only one cut off, but that's not the guy you can start things off initiating onto. That wall will only delay the inevitable push here as Team Liquid continue the siege. Only 22 minutes into the game, they're looking for a second inhibitor turret. And we talked about how game one, it was looking really good for the Thieves for a while, and then Liquid have the immaculate Baron steal that turns things around. Here in game number two, it seemed like it's been a lot more all about Liquid from the get-go. The Thieves had a couple of good moves but Liquid has just been in control. They have been so vocal about the amount of work that they have put in over this split, and it is showing here on stage. Yeah, showing right here the siege that they have going. Nope, Meteos rooted, and they're gonna go. Ornalti comes in, finds its way on to three, but 100 Thieves with their jungler nearly dead have to back away now. Poe Belter finding the damage. Down onto Cody Sun, the Thieves in full retreat. Liquid on full out offense, pushing into the second inhibitor. They'll take it down as the minions crash into the Nexus turrets, and Liquid falls back. And they're gonna fall back, but this is right as the Mountain Drake is spawning. Triple Mountain to potentially help them close the game. They will fall back very rich men. They got oh, so yeah. much in the last few minutes there for all members of Team Liquid after the Smithy play into all of the kills and the Baron plus multiple turrets there. 
My goodness, that was just a push for the ages. And both Poe Belter and Double Lift, the two late game carries, they're already online. It's just 23 minutes into the game. They have so much gold, 10,000 a piece. 10,000 a piece on the big damage dealers, just ever so slightly over. You're seeing those power spikes starting to come online. You've already got your Morello Namacon and your Nashor's Tooth on the Azir. Your Tristana sitting on two and a half of those big crit items. They're gonna make it a third Mountain Drake. So if this game even gets to the point where there's another Baron, that thing's gonna melt in a second. Or if they just wanna go straight towards the base, the turrets won't last long either. All the cards are in Liquid's hand to find the win here. And 100 Thieves, they're going to have to get very clever here because Team Liquid, they've just been grouping up using their Scion and using the fact that they have these hyper carries to actually just kind of tank this front line, especially Xmithy. He's been the one taking a beating. He's got 100% KP, though. He's the one face checking. And we'll see because he's very tanky. Xmithy on the front line, popping the subjugation. Meteo's going to be deleted. No way away from that one as Double Lift jumps forward, still looking to find more damage. The wall will hold Liquid at bay for a moment. Cody Sun throws out a couple more Mystic shots, but with your jungler down and your solo laners injured, it's Liquid's top lane to push. As soon as Meteor shows himself, boom, subjugate. He's now ultra squishy, and they just annihilate him. Yeah, Team Liquid aren't going to stop here. They're coming for the last inhibitor, and they're coming quick. Tier three under siege, but it won't be that way for long when it's a pile of rubble. Inhibitor number three now going down. The base is ruined, and a hundred thieves are on their last legs. Liquid continues to push. The tanks don't even care about the seismic shove. They can be thrown into a million of those little Talia stones. It will not matter. The damage does not pierce it, as now they push up with the bottom minion wave. They work their way towards the Nexus turrets. Ryu's gonna be knocked up into the air. The Ordo comes through. The mid laner flashes away. Impact having to fall back. The turret still dropping. Double up gets himself back with a rocket jump, as Meteor on the front line, can't find his way towards anyone. Gonna be stunned up, locked down, oh. and beat down. Yet again, Double Lift grabbed the kill on that one. As the turret drops in sync with it, they continue to push the powered up minions from the banner of command leading the way. And Paul Belter again into the front lines to make sure this fight goes the way of Team Liquid. Someday taken very low as Xmithy will tank for an eternity and a half. The Nexus is exposed, the Thieves are on the retreat, and Liquid is looking to take this to match point right here, right now. In a decisive game two, like we saw yesterday, Team Liquid proving themselves here, and now it will be match point for 100 Thieves. They have nothing left backs against the walls, they're gonna have to rally. Yeah, they have to find their playmakers. They have to find their plays fast, because right now what's going on is 100 Thieves, it doesn't look like they get to play the way that they want to. Cody Sun is not on this hyper carry. They'll swap back to blue side in the next game if they select it, which could potentially stop the things like the Caitlyn and Zaya ban that had happened in that one game, because Cody looked like he was not able to get any leverage in that game at all. Team Liquid seemed like they were very quick to adapt in game. Mm -hmm. Very, very fluid. They're, they're willing to send people to multiple multiple different lanes seconds after a play has just taken uh, you know, occurred in the mid lane, so definitely a lot to look out for. And that's a teamwork that you want to see that TL had at the very beginning of the split. They wasn't there for a little bit in the middle, but then as playoffs came around, they started to gel once again, and we're seeing that it's not just a single superstar on this team, that everybody is coming together to play the map. The entire team is looking like a mean, lean League of Legends machine, but to hear more about how they've started things off 2-0, let's send it back to the desk. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Team Liquid, they saw what Echo blue. Fox did yesterday. They They're said, hey, machine. we're going to try and do <laughs> one better. We're welcoming Apollo to the desk as Team Liquid moves to 2-0 and in the series, already putting us to series point. 26-minute game time that time around. And we saw both teams attempt something pretty early on into the game with a little bit of stuff shuffling around in the draft. Ultimately, mm -hmm. we ended up in that Trundle versus Skarner matchup, and we saw 100 Thieves try and influence the early game and that jungle matchup. Yeah, and I think it was a weird draft at first from Team Liquid, the fact that they're the ones banning Caitlyn and Zyre, thinking, man, Double Lift is great on both of those picks. But when they actually got the Tristan versus the Ezreal as far as late game team fighting or even mid game team fighting, you got to see how it paid off in the end. So they used the blue side flexibility in a way I didn't expect. I was going to say, we didn't get to the late game, Jap. This game ended in the mid game, but oh, yeah. we did still see the prowess of that Tristana along with 
the Azir and Poe Belcher piloting that one, but I do want to start in that level one. We saw a very delayed start for both junglers because of the weird invade that 100 Thieves threw around, but ultimately, it's Smithy being the jungler to recover and push his team to victory. And it was a, a definitely a strange situation that really came down to, oh, we don't have it in here, never mind. I stand corrected, but Smithy did play great despite the fact that he had a really weird one level one to deal with. He's able to counter gank up on Meteos. This is going to put him a little bit ahead, and then once he got that advantage, he was just all over the map. Yeah, I mean, I felt like they prioritized Trundle really heavily, and then also like we saw the Zai and the Kaelin ban, and he's just been Woo. really good on Trundle pretty much his entire playoffs. I and mean, yeah, you, 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 you've had, I was going to say, you've had the uh, privilege of probably yeah. scrimming against that pick. Uh, what can you say about Ix Smithy's Trundle compared to the rest? I think, well, I think he was probably one of the first ones to play Trundle first off, so he's had, like, the most experience, and then just whenever I played versus him, he... The first time, he ran around a map killing everybody the first five minutes of the game. And then we FF. <laughs> so, so you learned very quickly that it's a good champion. Right. Well, 100 yeah. Thieves didn't FF this time around. Yeah, they yeah, decided yeah. to stick it out till the end. But a 26 game, 26 minute game is blazing fast. Yeah. And again, I, I want to point out the fact that 100 Thieves looked like they were still on relatively comfort picks, maybe aside from that Ezreal. You've got the Talia right. signature pick for Ryu, and yet not able to get a ton done. Yeah, well, it's because they're not playing the way that they would want to play. There was so much mid lane focus in this game that Ryu was never able to go bottom lane when bottom lane was getting shoved in. And the other thing was I was talking with Apollo and just about how much there was going on in the bot lane where they missed an item timing when they couldn't quite recall and Doublelift comes back with a BF sword yeah. versus Tyr Ezreal and, and they really couldn't do much. Yeah, I mean, he stuck with Tyr for a good five minutes against the BF sword and I, I don't know how they can make any plays and like Jai was saying, when you get so much pressure on your mid, you're constantly running out of mana, you're like half HP, it's really hard for Rio to do anything. I think they dealt with the Talia pick really well. They weren't afraid of it at all. Unfortunate, because the Ezreal tier buy came in at a great time, exactly. yeah, but then yeah. he just kind of <laughs> couldn't push it forward to anything else. Of course, the game-breaking moment came around that Rift Herald pit. Poe Belter on this Azir coming up big with a huge stream of shuffle to get four people down and then pick up a Baron. And his Azir has been clutch all playoffs. This for 100 Thieves was an opportunity to pick off X Smithy, who had been crushing for most of the game. They used a decent amount on X Smithy, and here they're trying to get out the back. They don't have Orn in the pit, and this was one of the best alts oh we've seen. God. He even clips yeah. Cody's Oh stuff. my goodness. <laughs> that hitbox guy just gets. Oh man, that's so ah. brutal. It was one of those things where it happened so early on the game, Baron's not there yet, so you're like, Baron! And then you're like, all right, wait 30 seconds. And then they say, luckily, it's luckily it spawned. Yeah. <laughs> and double Mountain Drake, so they have no problems clearing it up. Right, double Mountain Drake able to pick up the Baron without the jungler from there. Six minutes to game closing time. And once again, we're on series point here for Team Liquid, yeah. trying to be the newest winner of the NALCS. Double up trying to do it for the uh, fourth time on a third team. They've only got to win one more, but I want to talk about 100 Thieves and how they bounce back because this is a team that's already been through a five-game series against you. Yeah. How do they extend this one to five games here today? I don't know. I think it looks like they tried to do a non-team fighting composition where like they, they try to get the early game in Snowball, but mm -hmm. then that didn't work. So maybe they're going to go back to having a better team fight comp and then just play out, play out to get to the mid game and the late game where they're stronger. All right, so looking for that team fighting comp, maybe being a little bit more defensive in the early game, because it, so far, Team Liquid well, has built two strong early games and just kind of run over them with it. I think that's the thing is it's it's not like TL's crushing them the entire game. It's like 20 minute hits, and then suddenly, last time it was off a Baron steal, this time it was off their own great team fight. Right. right. And it feels like these guys' strengths match up very, very closely. And so while it is a close game a lot of the time, uh, it's the fact that TL keeps getting these better pickoffs, these better fights, and, and slowly get a big lead. And 100 Thieves, I think, was winning game one yeah. until X Smithy stole Baron. So the fact that they're going back to blue side, uh, I don't think they'll get pinched off of Trist. Maybe they have to play Trist versus Kate again. But I think their team composition was pretty good right. in the first game. So as much as they can just replicate that and say, yeah, X Smithy's not going to get a Baron steal because they put a Singe Goo over Alistair. Like, the things that had to happen for... Uh, them to have that Baron stolen, they should try and reset on that. Like, think so do you the think series they, is 0-0 and just start again. I just received a confirmation that they did elect to go back to blue side here in game yeah. three. So so would you say, Jet, as much as possible, return to the game one draft and yes. just play it out cleaner? Yeah. yeah the I mean, only tweak I'd say is Poe Belter's Azir has been awesome. And <laughs> it's so much about team fighting, you want to get him off that pit. Okay, what about in the bot lane? Because we did see Cody push down onto that Ezreal. So should they be putting higher priority on getting him an early ADC pick? Yeah, I think the crit scaling AD carries are better for both of these guys, really. But the Ezreal didn't really pan out the way I think they wanted it to. So maybe getting back on Trist or like even putting him on Jin could be good. 
All right, Mark, what's your thoughts? Especially because we look at the top lane and we look at what Impact was able to do with that counter pick on red side. That's still got to be a fear for 100 Thieves being back on blue. Yeah, I think, well, on the bottling point, it does feel like they've had worse matchups the first two games. So I wouldn't mind seeing them put a big effort into getting the stronger matchup this time around. First time it was against Caitlyn. Second time it was Morgana into Braum. Yeah. And I, I think just giving Cody and Afro some, some more tools to kind of win their lane on their own could really help because they're not getting the help that they got all split long. Right. All right. Well, there you have it. Thoughts from the Analyst Desk team. Liquid our one went away from claiming their first championship. Meet us back here to see if 100 Thieves can rally in game three. So you'll be here to help if I need you? Kyle, I got you. Okay. What about here? Yep. Here? Yep. Is that for us? It sure is. Gimme, gimme. What about here? Here too, Kyle. And here's Sir Robert from State Farm. If you invite me. He said yes! I said let's battle! Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm.